Hey guys, uh, in this video I'm going to show real quick how to do the uh, get started with the uh, software development for the uh, TETA 010042 multi power point charge controller by Texas Instruments. It's actually just a reference design on their website. It's uh, totally free. They provide the schematics, the design guide, they provide the uh, whole software package. The whole shebang is right here through this website here. So uh, I got a couple of these boards, so we're going to be going to upload the firmware onto it today we're going to go ahead and use code composer studio for that so essentially what we're going to be looking at is uh, we're going to be working with this board here and we are going to be programming it with this right here um, this is a replica or a, a chinese knockoff debugger uh, or programmer jtag whatever you want to call it of this guy here the actual texas instruments uh, msv fet programmer so this one sells on amazon for 50 bucks it works well. It comes with the uh, debugger, the USB cable there, and the uh, ribbon connector with uh, the 14 pin headers on each side. And it also comes with like a, a CD with a bunch of just random stuff, uh, screenshots and some software. It's all in Chinese though. So, um, you know, that might be super sick if you speak Chinese, but I couldn't make much of it. So all you need though is the um, Code Composer Studio, which you can download on the TI website is free as well. So other than that, I didn't need to download any drivers or anything. So I will go ahead and connect the debugger now to my PC so you can see what that looks like. We're gonna go ahead and pull up the OG device manager, not the uh, new fandangled one. If you uh, go into the control panel and open it up, it might look a little different. So go ahead and search for it here. So it's connected right now. You can see MSP FET 430 UIF, that's us. Um, this will pop up whether or not you have anything plugged into the target. So we will disconnect the USB cable here. Nothing there now, plug it back in. There she is. Alrighty, so I'll go ahead and show the pin out real quick, just so you guys know what we're dealing with. Um, for this board, this TETA, uh, charge controller the uh, MSP 430 on it to program it. We're gonna go ahead and use spy by wire So you can see on the uh, this is actually a image Produced by TI but the manufacturer just using another website as well here But essentially they give a diagram for JTAG and they give a diagram for a uh, spy by wire here Which is essentially two wire JTAG now you can see here on pins one five seven nine two four and eight they have connections we're only going to be interested in the uh connections for pin one seven nine and two there which would effectively be the um test uh data out the test clock the ground and the uh voltage up top as you can see however the numbering is kind of meaningless to us because you know like i said one seven nine and two right there that corresponds to the actual like OEM product. You can see on the back here, um, one, seven, two, and uh, nine are, you know, they're the same thing. Test data out, ground, voltage, and the clock. But this is our debugger here, the uh, replica version, and they show the uh, pinout here. Now, they don't show a numbering scheme for it, so I've gone ahead and drawn one up here. So, <clears throat> Essentially, uh, essentially what you're looking at here is this is um, the pin out they give us with pin one being the top right corner There's a little indentation here, and I've drawn that here So I've, this image here is the uh, debugger with uh, pin one being in the top that uh, test data out and then the voltage being pin 14 in the bottom right so what I've gone ahead and done is things can get a little confusing because Here's a picture of my setup right here with the debugger plugged into the USB to my computer plugged into the ribbon cable and then I have a few uh, wires plugged into the uh, header there that plug into my board. Now the end of this ribbon cable, um, you know, depending on your perspective, it might be inverted. So for example, on the end of this ribbon cable, um, I think I have a good picture of it here. So this is the end of the ribbon cable here, which is the second image here with the indentation on the bottom of it, like it's configured here. So if you look at it head on like this, um, pin one is gonna be in the bottom right corner. So 
you know, what is described right here in the uh, image as test data um, out right there, pin one. Like if you're looking head on to the ribbon cable, you're gonna perceive that a little funky. So it's, you know, I've gone ahead and uh, showed which pins correspond to what right there. Um, and again, there's this little notch on the bottom of the ribbon cable here that I have drawn out. And then of course, this is just looking head on to the debugger because there's the uh, indentation right there that I've drawn. Now, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, the board itself here, the TETA board, um, in the actual schematics, if you were to order this PCB, it's in the uh, design files themselves. The uh, silk screen actually comes printed with the, uh, the header labeled. But if we go ahead and go to the um, Texas Instruments website right here for the board, under the design files, we can pull up the design guide. It's a great design guide. Uh, you should probably read it. It's not too long. It's not too dense. But if you come down quite a bit on page, uh, gee, let's see here, page 17, they uh, show the headers and what they are. Now, essentially what we're interested in is header J4 and J3. You can see um, the J4 header, the programming header, uh, pins one through four, or the programmer voltage, the test, the reset, and the ground. And pin one being this left pin, and then two, three, four going to the right. Uh, same thing with the J3 header, pin one is on the left, and then two, three. So what I've done here is you can see I have a gray cable into pin one, a purple cable into pin two, a blue cable into pin three, and then a white cable into pin four. So on my diagram right here, you know, G for gray, P purple, B blue, W white. That's how I have it configured there. I have those outputting. So, you know, you can see pins one through four labeled A1 through A4, little key down there for, uh, you know, voltage, uh, you know, uh, and then just right down the line there. But it's pretty straightforward. Uh, A1 goes to 14, which is the uh, voltage. A2 goes to the uh, test clock, A3 goes to the test data out, uh, and then A4 goes to the uh, ground, the corresponding pin numbers there. But since I have it color coded here, it's pretty obvious also, because I have a picture right here. This is what the header should look like uh, with that uh, protrusion actually, I guess, here being on the bottom, being on the bottom, pins one for blue, 14 for gray, five for white, four for purple. That's how you need to have that laid out or else it will not work. Now, the other thing, this is the um, spy by wire two uh, wire J tag. Now there's obviously four wires there because we also have the, uh, the uh, programmer voltage and the ground connected. Now that's important to know because, because we don't have the board plugged into a uh, power source. You know, I don't have this plugged into my benchtop power supply the uh, microcontroller is being programmed uh, and uh, powered by the uh, debugger here. So because we're doing that, it's all good and well. You just need to take note that in the design guide, it says, hey, if you're gonna power the board through the debugger or you know the programmer here, the uh, MSP430, uh, the MSP FET430 UIF programmer, which is what we're using here, um, says if you're gonna power the board through that, awesome, but you need to short out pins two and three on the J3 header. So what I've done there is I've uh, spliced a uh, two female wires there. I've just gone ahead and shorted out pins two and three. And um, if you don't do that, it just won't work. So just make sure to do that. It'll save you a headache there. So that's how you should have the wiring laid out. Now I'll go ahead and download the software real quick so I'll come back to the this is the uh, TIDA homepage on the TI website I'm gonna go to start development right here I'm gonna download the software it's gonna pop up right here I'm gonna go ahead and this is a you know a uh, compressed folder so I need to go ahead and extract it just gonna extract it to my downloads folder I don't really care about it too much Okay, cool. It's extracted. It's on my computer. I know where it is. I'm going to close it out. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up Code Composer Studio now. Like I said, Code Composer Studio is free. 
It's the only piece of software you need in conjunction with the um, the MSP FET programmer and whatever your target device is. So when you open up Code Composer Studio, it'll say, hey, what workspace do you want to use? Um, you can select workspaces you've already opened, but ultimately you can just go ahead and hit launch. Don't you know you don't have to mess with anything. I'll actually go ahead and show you right here. Um, once Code Composer Studio opens, yours will probably look something like this, right? With this getting started page right here. Um, now, if you wanted to switch workspaces and you had other ones open already, you can always go down to File, Switch Workspace. So that's why it doesn't really matter which one you open originally. But anywho. You should have this getting started menu here, this new project thing here. Um, if this ever goes missing, let's say it's gone, uh, you can always just come back up to uh, help getting started. It'll pop back that. Uh, same with over here, all sorts of stuff. You know, you can close stuff out here on the uh, home page. Um, just, just anything will kind of close out. You can always come back up to view. I'll reopen the disassembly tab over here. Uh, don't worry about that for now, but. Um, yeah, you can open stuff back up. Uh, likewise, over here sometimes, you know, maybe you'll accidentally hide something by mistake. This is this restore button over here that'll uh, pop stuff back into view. Um, one of the main things you're going to want to be looking at is your tree over here. So under view, having your project explorer over here open is nice. So under my project explorer, I have a uh, folder open from earlier, but that doesn't matter. Yours won't have anything there, and that's okay, because we're going to start a new file anyway. So like I said, at the beginning, uh, we have this, we're going to close this. This, you should look like this, essentially. We'll go new project. It'll open up a new Code Composer Studio project. We will select our target device. We are using a uh, MSP430 F5132. It just is in the drop down there. And then we went ahead and uh, selected uh, our debugger here, the TI uh, MSP430 USB right there. That's us. And if you hit this identify, It'll pop up like that. It's running. Uh, if I, for example, if I unplug my debugger and I hit that, it's not going to find it. So that's how you know you're in there. Um, like I said, uh, you can always check out the device manager before, though. Make sure everything is uh, running correctly. This will pop up whether or not you have the target device plugged in. So even if you just have the debugger uh, plugged into your computer, then um, it doesn't matter if you have your uh, microcontroller plugged into it or not. We'll go ahead and name it. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and just uh, select this empty project with main.c. We're going to go ahead and delete the main.c file in a minute anyways and replace it, but it's not really important. All right, so now that we got that launched, this is our new workspace here. Um, again, you know, if any of these go missing, you can always uh, reopen them up in the view tab there. But we will go ahead and open up the Project Explorer here. And as you can see, here we are, T to firmware testing. We'll go ahead and drop down the tree there, see what we can see. And since we have the firmware already like nice and packaged, uh, we're going to go ahead and just delete everything in here that we can delete. Um, you can't delete this. So it stays. Now over here, we're going to go ahead and right click on our uh, project. We're going to go new folder, advanced, link to alternate location. Then we're going to browse. Now I know I extracted that uh, software package to my downloads folder here. So we're going to go ahead and open it up. Make sure you open up the whole folder, but not the subdirectories, you know. We're going to select it and we are going to finish. Now you can see it's going to bring in a bunch of files there. So you'll notice right off the bat, it brings in four main.c files. Essentially, I've read through them and um, in a nutshell, this is the latest iteration, main.c. The other ones are a little older and um, doesn't really matter. So we're going to go ahead and delete those. Now we can actually go ahead and open up main.c here and you can always close that out and reopen it. Now down here on lines 84 through 86, this is the only real like thing you need to change to the code for it to work. You need to make sure you define the proper voltage system. So we're using a 24 volt system. 
Um, so we're going to uncomment that to you know make that parameter active, and then we're going to go ahead and recomment 48. So um, that's all set up properly now. Now there are two other things we have to do. Essentially, we have to delete this temporary files uh, folder here and this uh, old debug folder. Uh, essentially, when we go ahead and debug it in a second, and when we debug it, what I mean there is, um, if you're not familiar with it, debugging is really just you know we're, we're programming the microcontroller. Uh, the difference being that you know debugging specifically kind of means that you can individually cycle the uh, instructions and go line by line uh, to see where it's messing up. But it doesn't really matter. We're just going to go ahead and debug it. We're going to program it. Now, before we do that, we need to delete these two folders or else it's not going to work right. I'll actually go ahead and only delete one so you can see what it looks like if it doesn't work properly. So, all right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, try to upload the program now. So we can go into debug bug mode from there. We can go run debug, doesn't really matter. Same thing. It's gonna ask, if, uh, you know, what we wanna save, all right. So you can see it's red down there. It's not looking good. We're gonna proceed anyways. Right here, it pops up this uh, warning for ultra low power advisor. Essentially, there's uh, various different ways you can set in the uh, properties, different ways the compiler will optimize your uh, C code, and essentially this is asking how we want it to optimize for the ultra low power modes. Um, doesn't really matter, we're not gonna worry about it. Alrighty, like I said, there's an error. It's not gonna work right. Um, what we're going to do is, and this is nice because you can see that since it didn't upload right down here in the problems and advice section, you can see 87 items errors. You can actually come out here and uh, you know you can make that bigger. You could actually hover over and it'll tell you what the error was. Um, luckily, I already know what it is, and it'll also pop you out a little, uh, you know, little line there in the console. So if you're going to be troubleshooting, that's great to know. But we do know the problem. This debug folder it needs to be deleted because. Essentially, you can see when we try to debug it, it creates its own folder here. So, for example, it just created that folder in the last session. We'll go ahead and delete that. And we'll go ahead and run the debug again. You can see it's no red so far. It's looking good. We're going to proceed. Just going to take a second here. Okay, awesome. So we know it went down well because, you know, just right down here it says, hey, here's your FRAM usage and here's your uh, just RAM usage there. There's no red. There's no warnings or anything. Um, I'm going to pull back up my Explorer here. So you can see that, you know, after uploading that, it, you know, made another debug file there. Um, and it also made this folder over here, this uh, binaries with the uh, dot out file there. So essentially it's worked right now. The micro controller, you know, it's programmed, it's all good and dandy. So that is that. You can go ahead and just uh, close out. It's all, you know, the files are already in their place. You don't necessarily have to save. You can uh, change the name and save the workspace and stuff, but um, that's that. You can go ahead and go to exit. And there we are. I hope you found it helpful.